Hello, my name is Darren Tuckett and I work in the Grey Matter Cloud and Licensing team. Today we'll be looking at some of the changes that took effect from the 1st of October in and around the Dynamics 365 family. Firstly, we're going to look at Power Apps. Microsoft have changed the licensing model for Power Apps. Uh, used to have Power Apps Plan 1 and Plan 2 um, along with the seeded Power Apps. Plan 1 and Plan 2 are now being replaced with Power Apps Power App plan and power apps per user plan. Um, costing on these, as you can see, is $10 per user per app per month on power apps per app plan and $40 per user per month on power apps per user plan. The power apps per app plan allows individual users to run applications for a specific business scenario, but still based on the full capabilities of power apps. Uh, as you remember previously, power apps plan one only gave you limited functionality. The Power Apps Per User Plan uh, gives users the ability to run unlimited applications, also based on the full capabilities of Power Apps. And the Seeded Power Apps allow you to extend and customize Office 365 and Dynamics 365, which is also a change from the previous use rights of Power Apps included with those programs. So if we look at this in a li little bit more detail, the Power Apps Per Plan Overview, uh, an app is a combination of power platform assets that solves a specific business scenario. The Power App provides use rights to one portal and two custom apps. This can be model driven or canvas. Uh, there's no limits on any other components such as forms and dashboards. One of the advantages of this plan is you can stack it. So if you do have a scenario where you need four apps, you just purchase two app plans and apply those both to the same user, they'll then be able to choose four apps within the portal. Um, this is a good way of customers who only want to license a subset of users with a few specific apps or someone that wants to get started on the platform. Power Apps Per User Plan. This allows licensed users to run unlimited, fully featured custom applications. It's priced at $40 per user per month. So if we look at a comparison of the two plans here, um, we can see in the first column, two apps versus unlimited apps, one custom portal versus unlimited custom portals. The other features are largely the same to get down to the common data service database capacity. We do have a higher capacity, uh, which would be expected with, with more apps. Um, the other bit that I want to look at was the Microsoft Flow use rights, where you can now use Flow within the context of the app. So to give you an example of that, a flow within context of app, a user with standalone Power Apps license runs an app that uses SQL database as a data source and includes flows that read from or write to the SQL database and use a built-in Power Apps trigger and or action, e.g. send or a push notification to the app. Something that's considered not to be in the context of the app would be the same user now also wants to use flow that updates an Oracle database and is completely unrelated to the Power Apps app does not interact in any way with the Power Apps app or its data sources. This user will then require a standalone flow license. Uh, one of the other differences you can see there as well is there is a daily API request limit of a thousand uh, requests on the Power Apps per app plan and 5,000 on the Power Apps per user plan. Uh, to combat this, if there are a greater need for API requests, you can purchase 10,000 daily API requests at $50 per unit, uh, which can be used for both Power Apps and Flow. One of the changes uh, which we need to look at is Power Apps portals. This will be replacing Dynamics 365 portals in the future, uh, specifically targeted at licensing external users that are authenticated. So Power Apps Portal's login capacity add-on, you can get 100 logins for $200 a month, 1,000 logins for $1,000 a month, or 5,000 logins for $3,500 a month. Uh, a login provides an authenticated user access to a single portal for up to 24 hours. So if you had 10 users that accessed uh, for one day, that would only be 10 logins for the month. We'd have to obviously consider if they are going to log in every day, uh, your login amount would need to increase for that. Uh, 
You can also license external users that are unauthenticated, uh, and this is done on 100,000 page views. Uh, so if you have got a situation where they're not logging in, but they're just viewing pages of the portal, uh, this would be the right one to choose. Uh, and internal users um, are aligned with the app use rights, which they purchased. Customers can also provision a Power Apps portal instance, no need to purchase a separate license. So moving forward, Dynamics 365 portals uh, will automatically transition to Power Apps portals and no action is required from customers. Dynamics 365 additional portals and Dynamics 365 additional portal page view SKUs will be retired. Existing customers will be grandfathered. Uh, there's a slide which details this in a moment. Um, on how that works, but you'll be able to utilize the existing Dynamics 365 portal on the old model until the end of the grandfathering. Um, and you'll be able to purchase additional Dynamics 365 portal SKUs until the end of the grandfathering, but you will be able to purchase and provision Power Apps portals from the 1st of October. Next, we will be looking at Microsoft Flow. Uh, again, Flow was licensed before with Plan 1, where you had a maximum number of 4,500 flows per month with a maximum frequency of three minutes, or Plan 2, which had 15,000 flows and a maximum frequency of one minute. Uh, again, they've changed this now so that uh, there's the per user plan, where you license each user that's using them with an unlimited uh, number of workflows and business processes based on their unique needs, or you can license a single flow per business. Uh, there is a minimum purchase here of five flows. Uh, we'll look at this in more detail in a moment. You've also got the seeded flows uh, as previously available in certain Dynamics 365 and Office 365 suites. However, once again, these have changed. They do need to be within the context of the app. So for the per user plan, it's $15 per user per month. You've got unlimited flows. There's no metering or caps on flow runs as there was previously. There's a daily API request of 5,000. Uh, you can purchase additional uh, API requests as stated previously. And the flow per business process plan. So you license an individual specific flow uh, within your organization. You may have many users that want to use that flow. That's $100 per month per enabled workflow you do need to purchase five units. So you'd need to consider it's gonna be at least $500 per month um, to do a business workflow. The child flows um, are not billable, um, and these are flows that are triggered by another flow versus a data source or a user action. Uh, you do get 15,000 daily API requests with this plan. However, you can purchase more. So if we look at the summary slide, you can see here uh, minimum purchase on the per use plan. It's not applicable, five units on the per business. Um, user license not required on the flow per month uh, as it's licensed for business. And again, looking down there, you've got the same features. The only difference is the daily API requests uh, for that as well. Grandfathering. So for Power Apps Plan 1, Plan 2, Flow Plan 1, Plan 2, and Dynamics 365 additional portals and additional portal page views, you will be able to continue purchasing these until the 31st of March 2020. You have the choice to purchase new or existing on renewal. Um, if your renewal is actually after uh, the 1st of April, 2020, uh, you'll, no, you'll have to renew into the new SKUs. Um, if it's previous to that, you will be able to renew into the existing SKUs. So it's worth having a look and seeing what ones may work out better for you or your customer. So transition for existing Dynamics 365 customers. All tenants with Dynamics 365 subscriptions as of the 30th September receive an extension of licensing terms for 12 months from the 1st of October or expiration of current Dynamics 365 subscription, whichever is longer. So for Power Apps use rights, users of Dynamics 365 Enterprise app plan licenses continue to use standalone custom Power Apps applications in any environment. Flow use rights also remain the same where they can do standalone flows that do not map to the app context. 
but for flow limits, there's no metering or enforcement for, of tenant-wide runs moving forward. Usage limits continue to apply for service protection and eligible organisations will maintain comparable service limits. The new daily API requests will not apply during the transition. So here's just a look at the Power Apps use rights with Dynamics 365. So for Dynamics 365, you no longer to run, be able to run standalone apps. Um, and for Enterprise, you can only do it within the same environment as licensed Dynamics 365 applications. Still sticking with the creating access custom entities, 15 per application or unlimited within the Enterprise. Uh, and as mentioned previously, the Microsoft Flow use rights are only within the app context. There's no rights to use Power Apps portals within Dynamics 365 apps. However, in Dynamics 365 enterprise apps, again, you do as long as it's within the same environment licensed uh, for Dynamics 365 applications. So similarly with Flow, um, you can you no longer be able to execute standalone flows. So that is those flows which exist outside the context of the app. Uh, you can only, as it says on the next line, execute flows within context of license application. Um, again, creating custom access custom entities is limited to 15 within Dynamics 365 apps uh, and unlimited within Dynamics 365 enterprise apps. So one of the other larger changes uh, is on the Dynamics 365 plans. Previously, the two Microsoft Hero SKUs were a customer engagement plan and a unified operations plan. Um, I've shown a slide here of what was available in each plan. So you can see for that $115 a month, uh, those, those products built up uh, that SKU. And uh, for $190 a month, the unified operations plan, you had those products building up that SKU. Uh, we're going to look on the next few slides at how that's changed from the 1st of October. So you can see from here, um, the customer engagement plan will be removed, as will the unified operations plan. And Microsoft are moving towards what they've called an a la carte sales motion. In this motion, you'll need to purchase a base license and then add on SKUs for the additional functionality you require. You must always purchase the most expensive base SKU in every instance. Uh, we'll see an example of this in some future slides. Uh, marketing is still included with a 10 seat minimum for 2000 contacts. There are some other changes which have happened around marketing, which are not covered in this uh, presentation, uh, but you can contact your account manager um, or speak to one of us in the licensing team if you've got specific questions around that. So you can see here, the base app for sales is $95. The way this now works is you would add on each additional feature you require. So if you purchase sales and you required customer service, you would purchase uh, a base license, say, of sales for $95, and then an add-on of customer service for $20. And then you may require something like field service. You'd add that on again at another $20. So if you're only using two apps, you're looking at around the same price as it was previously for the engagement plan. However, once you go past two apps, you will be looking at a higher cost than previously. This slide here details uh, more around how the base licenses and the add-on SKUs work. Uh, so to give an example of earlier, I said you always have to have the most expensive SKU as your base SKU. If you are looking at purchasing sales professional and customer service professional, you would need to purchase the sales professional SKU at $65. You can then add on the customer service SKU at $20. If you look at the table, you can see that you can add a sales professional SKU to a customer service professional SKU because the customer service professional base SKU is only $50. Um, so you can't do it that way around, you'd have to do it the other way. Uh, the table shows everywhere where there is a line, you can purchase the add-on. Everywhere there's a price, that is the Microsoft uh, dollar price of what it would be to purchase the add-on. Um, and that is the end of the presentation. Um, you can see here there's a list of licensing resources you can refer to. There is a new Dynamics licensing guide that is due out in October. Uh, I have checked and that is not available yet. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that one uh, on the Dynamics licensing page listed here. 
However, uh, once it is out, we will have it available so we can send that on to anyone that requests it from us. Okay, thanks very much for listening.